Discovery is a child's privilege. I mean the small child, the child who is not afraid to be wrong, to look silly, to not be serious, and to act differently from everyone else. He is also not afraid that the things he is interested in are in bad taste or turn out to be different from his expectations, from what they should be. Or rather, he is not afraid of what they actually are. He ignores the silent and flawless consensus that is part of the air we breathe, the consensus of all the people who are, or are reputed to be, reasonable. In fact, most of these comrades who I gauge to be more brilliant than I have gone on to become distinguished mathematicians. Still, from the perspective of 30 or 35 years, I can state that their imprint upon the mathematics of our time has not been very profound. They've all done things, often beautiful things, in a context that was already set out before them, which they had no inclination to disturb. Without being aware of it, they remain prisoners of those invisible and despotic circles which delimit the universe of a certain milieu in a given era. To have broken these bounds, they would have had to rediscover in themselves that capability which was their birthright, as it was mine the capacity to be alone. It's to that being inside of you who knows how to be alone. It is to this infant that I wish to speak, and no one else. I'm well aware that this infant has been considerably estranged. It's been through some hard times, and more than once over a long period. It's been dropped off Lord knows where, and it can be very difficult to reach. One swears that it died ages ago, or that it never existed, and yet I am certain it's always there, and very much alive. It is in this gesture of going beyond to be something in oneself rather than the pawn of a consensus, the refusal to stay within a rigid circle that others have drawn around one. It is in this solitary act that one finds true creativity. All other things follow as a matter of course. I am not really doing research, just trying to cultivate myself. The introduction of the cipher zero, or the group concept, was general nonsense too, and mathematics was more or less stagnating for thousands of years because nobody was around to take such childish steps. One should never try to prove anything that is not almost obvious. If there is one thing in mathematics that fascinates me more than anything else, and doubtless always has, it is neither number nor size, but always form. And among the thousand and one faces whereby form chooses to reveal itself to us, the one that fascinates me more than any other, and continues to fascinate me, is the structure hidden in mathematical things. Fertility is measured by offspring, not by honors. And every science, when we understand it not as an instrument of power and domination, but as an adventure in knowledge pursued by our species across the ages, is nothing but this harmony, more or less vast, more or less rich from one epoch to another, 
which unfurls over the course of generations and centuries by the delicate counterpoint of all the themes appearing in turn, as if summoned from the void. The question you raise, how can such a formulation lead to computations, doesn't bother me in the least. Throughout my whole life as a mathematician, the possibility of making explicit, elegant computations has always come out by itself as a byproduct of a thorough conceptual understanding of what was going on. Thus, I never bothered about whether what would come out would be suitable for this or that, but just tried to understand. And it always turned out that understanding was all that mattered.